Harry's Wife, Part 104.6 Archetypes Too Hard Test and My Mate Sophie Yes, it's Tuesday, and that means it's time for a dollop of industrial blage courtesy of Harry's Wife and Arsy Wipes, the pod crap that's hosted on Spot Her Lie. Naturally, my delicate, conch-like ears could not be subjected to the auditory offensiveness of the Duchess of Delusion spouting yet more deceitful nonsense, that syrupy beige voice trickling its way out of the speakers. No. Plus, I'm not going to spend my time listening to that dross let us see what other people have to say about it first before we perhaps venture in that direction. The Daily Mail with Martin Robinson reports, Harry's wife reveals she studied for UK citizenship test and asked husband Harry for help because it was so hard. In latest Archetypes podcast about the pressures of being a partner and a parent, featuring First Lady of Canada, Sophie Trudeau. The Spotify episode apparently was entitled Good Wife, Bad Wife, Good Mom, Bad Mom. Ah! Yet again, Harry's wife has been labelled a bad wife and a bad mum. So that means, of course, she has to put it on her... Checklist. She has to get out her clipboard of all the horrible things that have ever been said about me and work her way through it. So that's why, of course, we've had Diva and Angry Black Lady and other such epitaphs that have been labelled at Harry's wife. Now it's about being a good wife or a bad wife, a good mom or a bad mum. The Mail reports, Harry's wife today revealed she studied for the UK citizen test after meeting Prince Harry, who she claims had no idea about some of the answers when she asked him for help because it was so hard. Ah, yes, dim and dimmer got together here, thick and even thicker. Now, of course, with regard to the citizen test, I understand, of course, that she grew up in another country and therefore might have a degree of difficulty with some of the answers. But if she had embraced the culture of Britain, given the fact that her husband is British and that she was coming to live here, it wouldn't be too difficult to address those questions. They're not that hard. After all, isn't this a lady that assimilates other cultures into herself, give her some noodles. Whilst naked, all of a sudden she understands Koreans. And all of a sudden, as a consequence of some genealogy test, she becomes 43% Nigerian, failing to appreciate that Nigerian is a nationality, not an ethnicity, because there are over 250 different ethnicities in Nigeria. But that's not going to get in the way of Harry's wife once again exhibiting how she's somewhat dim. So what a brain's trust these two forged, huh? Oh, I don't know what to do, Harry. I don't know the answers. And imagine then that you turn to, mm, you know, Chris Tarrant turns up or whichever suitable presenter it is in your country on who wants to be a millionaire. Phone a friend I'll phone Harry. Imagine having Harry as your choice of friend to answer. Uh, d- yeah, uh, uh, blue crayon, I think. So she turns to him because she finds the test too hard. And this is a major, major piece of news that is sent our way as a consequence of this pod crap. Now, before we get on with learning more nonsense from the beigeness, let's just have a little bit of consideration for just how difficult this test might have been. Well, gov.uk tells us that the Life in the UK test is the only official government service for bucking the Life in the UK test. You need to take the test as part of your application for British citizenship or settlement in the United Kingdom. 
You must book your life in the UK test online at least three days in advance. It costs £50. There are over 30 test centres in the United Kingdom. You can choose where to take your test when you book. Uh, You'll be tested on information in the official handbook for the life in the UK test. You should study it to prepare for the test. The handbook is available as a book, an e-book, an e-learning subscription, or in audio formats. And you'll have 45 minutes to answer 24 questions about British traditions and customs. So 24 questions, roughly nearly nearly two minutes per question. So that doesn't seem particularly taxing to begin with, does it? And it's all about various traditions and customs. And so there is an official practice questions and answers book that you can obtain. And there's also the official study guide book, available from seven ninety nine. And they don't look like they're particularly odious and onerous tomes. And there's an official guide for new residents book. And consequently, the fact is that all you have to do is read the book, do a bit of remembering. It's not like you're being asked blind, for instance, turning up and being asked, in what year did David Beckham's right foot score an absolute scorcher against Greece to ensure that England got into the forthcoming World Cup finals? course it was October 2001 but you wouldn't be asked that you wouldn't be asked for instance which Prime Minister of the United Kingdom was the first to have a criminal conviction whilst in office you'd be allowed to study for all of this before being asked it wouldn't just be thrown at you but of course for Harry's wife oh dear it was all too difficult The article explains that the Duchess of Sussex, a star guest on her new Spotify podcast, is First Lady of Canada, Sophie Trudeau. The friends spoke about the challenges of parenting and being a partner to two famous men in an episode called Good Wife, Bad Wife, Good Mom, Bad Mom. Of course, Harry's wife isn't able to get anybody of any true meaning on the show unless they're either paid have their own agenda, or they form a dwindling number of her existing friends. The article explains the pair also described the crushing guilt of being a mother in public eye. Harry's wife doesn't experience guilt, she just believes that she does. With Harry's wife admitting to Sophie, admitting Sophie used to send me little meditations during my pregnancy and voice notes of encouragement adding, I've gone to her over the years for advice i.e. your narcissism compelled you to go and dole out a pity play in order to assert control over her and probably indirectly over other people, namely members of your family, that you were cutting out of your life. And Harry's wife also revealed she threw a pool party this summer for Mrs Trudeau where the two giggled like schoolgirls. Fascinating. Spotify, are you really pleased with what you've spent here? And drank wine on the terrace of her Monte Shitcho mansion. So, as you're deciding whether you're going to heat or eat this winter, you can rest assured that this multimillionaireess and the other multimillionaireess giggled like schoolgirls and drank wine on the terrace at the Monte Shitshow Mansion. Bet you feel good about that, don't you? The article continues, but Harry's wife also chatted to comedian Pamela Adlon. Best known, really, I've never heard of her, as the voice of Bobby Hill in the animated comedy series King of the Hill who became a British citizen in 2020. Well, it would appear that Pamela could pass the test, so you've at least brainier than Harry's wife, though that's not particularly difficult. Harry's wife then revealed that she prepared for the life in the UK test a couple of years ago. Although LA born and based, Harry's wife is not believed to be a British citizen, having reportedly abandoned the idea after Megxit. Experts said that she didn't live in the UK for the three years required to get spousal citizenship after marrying Harry in 2018. She said, That citizenship exam is so hard. I was studying for it to the test and I remember going, Oh my goodness. I would ask my husband, Did you know this? Did you know this? And he would say, I had no idea. Well, that's hardly a surprise, is it? Turning and asking that dimwit. But she did not expand on whether she ever took the test or just studied for it. According to the explosive biography, 
Finding Freedom, yes, that's still kicking around. Uh, when she began dating Harry in 2016, Harry's wife was urged to take advice from Sophie Trudeau by her friend Jessica Mulroney, who deemed the two women now had a lot in common because of their famous husbands. Uh, they would become close pals and confidants with Justin Trudeau, urging his country to welcome the Sussexes after they emigrated from the UK in 2020. Introducing her friend Mrs Trudeau, Harry's wife called her a humanitarian mother who she met in Toronto at the city's fashion week around seven years ago when she was starring in suits. Oh, that gets mentioned again. That's a surprise. She said, Sophie has become a dear friend and someone who I think is so emblematic of strength that comes from embracing your humanity, even in the face of all these family and home and public pressures. Oh, yes, life is so tough for you. Keeping that sense of self while holding up the mantle of what comes with being a parent and a spouse. That's a full plate. Yes, life's really fucking difficult, isn't it? Living in a mansion with a staff and people running around after you. My heart bleeds. Uh, Ms. Harry's wife and... Canada's first lady became friends when Harry's wife was filming suits. The Duchess of Sussex became part of Toronto's platinum elite, which also included their mutual friend Jessica Mulroney. They posed together cheek to cheek on a Toronto rooftop bar in 2016 at the exclusive Soho House. Fascinating. And it was Mrs. Trudeau's husband, who has been Canada's Prime Minister since 2015, who urged his country to welcome the Sussexes after they emigrated from the United Kingdom. They would later move to L.A., Opening the podcast, Harry's wife describes a day of laughter and fun at her Monte Show mansion with Mrs. Trudeau. Their children played in the swimming pool on pizza-shaped floats while they drank wine on the terrace and were giddy like absolute schoolgirls. Wow, this really does aid the human condition, doesn't it? Harry's wife said, This wasn't our day of being the wives and mums, all perfectly quaffed with updos and pearls and demure smiles. This was the other version of us, both with wild curly hair and swimsuits and loose linen and huge belly laughs. Big cuddles with our little ones, quiet whispers of girl talk on the terrace, giddy like absolute schoolgirls. We were just having so much fun. Great. Well, the world needs to know all of this, doesn't it? So, valuable viewers, when you were out last Friday getting absolutely banjacked down your local weather spoons in Britain, and then you staggered on to Abracababra, baffed at the door and then said, get me a large donna, plenty of onions, before making your way to bonkers night spot... Why haven't you got a podcast telling everybody about that night out? Or maybe the case that you wandered around to your friends and did some baking together, cracked open the wine, got sloshed, and tried on various outfits, were giggling and gurgling away like drains. Then where's the podcast about it? The world needs to know. All of you people that have got together with somebody else and had a nice time, that's absolutely groundbreaking material that needs to be shared. Of course, this is Harry's wife engaging in her usual behaviour of trying to say, hey, look, I've got a friend and I'm relatable and I giggle too and I float on pizza-shaped floats. Hmm, you must like me. It's all facade management and a load of bollocks. It's not interesting and, quite frankly, most people would think that it takes the piss. The article continues. Harry's wife went on to reveal she was talking about an event with Sophie, whom she has known for a number of years, before joining the royal family. Elsewhere, she described how she had gone to Sophie for advice over the years after meeting seven years ago. Harry's wife had previously met her husband, Justin Trudeau, at the One Young World Summit in Ottawa that year, with the pair pictured deep in conversation. No doubt and Harry's wife trying to angle to see if it was worth pulling him. Uh, Sophie had given up a career in television where she'd been working as a correspondent on CTV's eTalk to take on a more formal role alongside her husband as he hit the campaign trail. The author's claim of finding freedom, yada, yada, yada. It then talks about what's gone on from their relationship, from finding freedom, which is not particularly interested in that. Then the mail continues, Harry's wife also shared a glimpse of her morning routine on our podcast, Archetypes. Wow. To be honest, I find it far more interesting for Patrick Bateman to tell me about his morning routine when he showers and the various potions and lotions that he utilises. Far more interesting than the Duchess of Industrial Beige. But speaking to her guest, American actress Pamela Adlon, the Duchess of Sussex, <coughs> 41, revealed what mornings are like for her and Prince Harry in their Monty Shit Show home. 
describing her morning rush. Ha! <laughs> Harry's wife revealed how she and Prince Harry start the day by looking after their children Archie three and little bit one, presumably by taking over the nannies for five minutes. So the morning rush, I'm sure it'll only get more chaotic as they get older, Harry's wife said. But for me, you know, both monitors on for the kids to hear them. Always up with Lily, get her downstairs. Then half an hour later, Archie's up, she said. So basically, if you actually do this, you're just doing which millions of people around the world already do. Why do we need to hear about this? You're not special. You're not interesting. Although you think you are because of your the delusion of your narcissism. You married a prince, that's it. Your mourning is no different to anybody else's, and we don't need to hear about it. She went on to say, she starts doing his lunchbox right before he's up while I have her, getting her a little nibble. My husband, my husband's help me, my husband's help me get him downstairs. I make breakfast for all three of them. It's very important to me. I love doing it. Wow, so talented. Uh, for me, it just feels like the greatest way to start the morning, she added, as Sophie cooed. It was so sweet. You can just imagine how sashery this sounded. After breakfast, the mother of two moves to feed the family's dogs. Life is hard. And revealed Harry and her recently got a third pet. Yeah, Harry. And then it's like, feed all three of the dogs because we just got another dog. And then it's get Archie out the door for school. And you know, but it does. It feels like a whirlwind, she said. A whirlwind? What? Waking up in a house where you have staff who've probably set out all of the food anyway, cleaned already, probably have been up with Lilibet in the night and wiped her backside, plonked her next to you, and then all you do is come downstairs, get them organised, get Archie ready for nursery or school or whatever it is he does, and feed three dogs. Fucking hell, that's difficult, isn't it? Pamela then said she hopes Prince Harry contributes to this demanding morning routine and kid time. Also, I hope Dad is being a good tributor, contributor to like the time, the kid time, she said. To which Harry's wife replied, Oh, my husband, not Harry. Oh, my husband, objectification. He's great. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing and scintillating insights so far from what the mail tells us about this utter dross. Aren't you delighted? that she got paid all of this money to trot out this crap. It's simply unlikely that she did many of these things because of the help that they have. Let's pop below the line, though, so it's entertaining, and see what people have to say. Shabawanks, pressures, they live lives of luxury. Try living in a one-bed flat with two kids, and the gas meter needs feeding. Joke. Oh dear. So they expect people to listen to a couple of overprivileged women who owe everything they have to their husbands bemoan how difficult they have it. Bite me. Fenwin, not planning to listen. Lord Lucan, goodness me, the banality of it all. Marja, yes, because she's the only one who's a parent and a partner. You couldn't make this drivel up. Jim Jam Johnny, irrelevant story. Wallis, Harry's wife hardly anyone's bothered about what you say or do. Chaz Dave, you couldn't make it up. Very hard life. Clearly sarcastic. Slarty Barty, pressures, problems of the world's elites and wealthy. Mike Croft, did she discuss with the First Lady of Canada why they said they were going to live in Canada, then change their minds and move to the USA? Bushcraft, this is her day job. Speak to someone, record it and get money from it. Naturally, of course, you can see that it's just rubbish absolute beige nonsense. Old expat, there's nothing like a bit of privacy, and this is nothing like a bit of privacy. Mr. Sanders, who knew you could make a career out of vacuity? Lollipoppy, I wonder how these kind of women could have managed 72 years ago with two or more children if their husbands hadn't returned from the war. Tone 101, what exactly did these vapid woke women know about pressure on raising children? They have multiple nannies for that chore. Aqua Emperor, I wonder if she knows every podcast makes her look worse. Helston1261 replies to that. No, too much ego. My grandparents have been married for 50 years and never saw being in a marriage as pressure or their children as a challenge, but a blessing. If she feels challenged as a parent or pressure being in a partnership, then that is down to her and her lack of ability. 
Lizzie also adds, nope, too thick-skinned and too many people fawning over her and telling how wonderful she is. Emperor's new clothes. Alfie's dad, dumb and dumber. Ricky boy has her. Why did you give yourself a life sentence? John H. Taylor, probably because she cannot do joined-up writing. Sunshining02, try being a partner and a mother when you have a full-time job, have to do the school runs, and after coming home from work, have to do the cooking and cleaning and homework with the kids, bath time and bedtime and all the rest of it. Rolls eyes. Lovely one, talk about not being able to read the room, you privileged so-and-so. Rabble rouser, I highly doubt that happened. Suki1805, she needn't have bothered. Bob T, shut up, Harry's wife, nobody is interested. Chris, so implemented of strength, what does that mean? Life is a game. Does she just chat with her mates about herself and get paid millions by Spotify? Ressa, yes, it is hard to study for something you have an absolute, absolutely no interested, no interest in. Chrisima, nobody gives a toss about this. Mog, thank goodness we have Catherine, Princess of Wales. I'm absolutely sure she wouldn't spout such rubbish. Adulfitta, Hard being a parent. When was the last time she was seen with her kids? Millie. She uses a lot of words to say nothing. Getting panned once again. Not one supportive comment. The sugars seem to have evaporated. And as somebody pointed out, she doesn't realise that these banal, vapid, vacuous, beige podcasts which are, of course, a product of her own delusion and her belief that she's absolutely brilliant and interesting, only serve for more and more people to shake their heads at her complete lack of emotional empathy, her complete level of delusion, and the fact it just keeps on making her look worse. But she can't see it because her narcissism blinds her to it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. Bye.